So let's talk a little bit about four link settings. So um, this is the great mysterious four link here that is all the uh, black magic in it that everybody talks about. Well, the four link is is very simple when you break it down into what it actually does. So there's there's nothing uh, scary about moving links on the four link um, area. So um, this car has uh, just standard brackets in it, so we have a you know given hole setting, uh, top and bottom. The top holes are a little smaller and closer together. Um, bottom holes are, are a little farther apart. So we have two different types of brackets. We have this uh, standard hole bracket, and we also have the uh, adjustable bracket that has the slides in it, so you can get uh, uh, you can leave the ride height static on the car, and you can move the slider brackets up and down to get uh, incremental adjustments of an eighth inch where these you have to move from hole to hole. The um, uh, adjustable brackets will be a lot finer of, of an adjustment. So there are a couple things just to kind of keep in mind here when we talk about four link settings. You have numbers that depending on whose rear end housing you have and what hole locations you have back there, um, you have numbers you have spread numbers so you have a front spread and a rear spread so your front spread is the center to center of these two front bolts and the rear spread is the, the distance between the top four link bolt and the bottom four link bolt on the housing bracket so you have rear spread and front spread and those two spreads make the length of the intersect point so uh, if you were to to project a line through the center of these bars they would intersect out at a point up around the back of the transmission there. So you have spread and then you have your intersect point and then you have the angle of this bottom bar and that is um, critical in making the car work properly. So depending on the weight of the car, the power it has, the gear ratio on the transmission, I mean there's a million things that factor into this but the very basics of a four link are simple. So to calculate out the, uh, we have a program that we use that's the Chassis Master. It's very easy to input these numbers and, and um, plot changes uh, for the four link. So our brackets are already set up in it and it's, it's very simple to use. But if you don't have that program, um, you can draw this out on a piece of cardboard or, or uh, uh, anything that's long enough to get a 60 inch intersect point. So. If I projected this line between these four link bars, it would go out to a point from the center line of the axle to a given number. So we'd have that length and we'd have that height off of the ground. So that number would be, let's say 55 inches long and six inches high. So this bottom bar plays into that by the simple fact that downward angle is going to put bite into the car it's going to try to compress the rear of the car more it's going to compress the shocks and, and add bite okay so let's just say we're gonna um have this at zero okay so now i want to be at ride height when i do this so i've got I've, for the video here i've got the car jacked up and i've got the rear end up at the, in the ride height position and i'm going to just simulate how this would be setting on the ground so Ideally, you want to check this with the uh, car sitting on the ground and the driver in it, race ready, tire pressure right, everything good. And in, in another video, I talked about this SPI digital protractor that we have. This is another time when we would use this. Um, you can simply slide under the car, and I, I talked about this V groove in here for uh, setting on a tube. So I can simply put this on this tube here. And if I can't see it, if it's dark or I can't see it, I can press the hold button and lock that in. And then I can bring it out here and I can see that that's three degrees. And it's showing me that it's, um, I need to go down to zero. So I, I would need to tip this to go down to zero. So that bar, if I put that at zero, that means that bar is running downhill. So if this bar were level, that would be like a baseline for our, our um, uh, intersect point just for reference from more bite to less if we if the car had too much bite and it was the drive shaft speed was slow and it just wasn't going it was out kind of trying to rattle the tire and you wanted to take some bite away from the car you would raise the front of this bar up you would pull this up which will 
but at the same time you're going to have to keep your spread the same so if you've got a good length let's say that 55 inch number that i have you're going to want to raise both of these up and keep this spread the same and move this up and as you move this up it will not try to compress the rear it will it will actually try to spread it and get it get it up and let the tire spin easier so that's a very simple explanation of the four link so there, there's a lot more technical stuff in it as far as the spread on the rear and how long the intersect point is based on the front and rear percentage of weight in the car so there's lots of factors that you need to know like we get calls all the time where it'll be like okay i've got my car and i need to know where to set the four link at well there isn't a general setting for every car so we need to know lots of things about the car how what does the car weigh in total how much weight's on the front how much is on the rear what power does it have i mean all these everything about the car should be used to factor where to start with the four link um, it also is important to know where you're going to run this car at if you're running on marginally prep tracks or are you going to run on national event tracks a lot of difference in how you set the car up for a track that you're going to run on every weekend that gets a little prep and a little glue and and that's it versus a very well prepped nice sticky racetrack a lot of difference in where you set the four link so just this is just kind of the basic intro to four link settings and we're going to get a lot more in depth in this later on in some more advanced videos but just uh, wanted to talk about some of the things that are terminology for this, which is spread, lower bar angle, um, length of the intersect point, height of the intersect point. So, you know, like I was saying earlier, as you bring this bar up to um, get the uh, uh, bite away from the rear end housing, that intersect point, as long as you keep this spread the same, the intersect length will stay the same. It's just gonna come up higher off the track surface. So where if it's a downward bar angle at 55 inches, it might only be five and a half, six inches high. And you start raising this up, leave the ride height alone, you'll get a 55 inch bar that might be eight inches high. So now you've got this bar either running level or uphill, or it's, it's not uncommon to run this bar uphill one and a half, two degrees. I mean, it can be easily be that in several cars just, just to get the back of the car to work right. So having this number is very, um, uh, very important and along with the spread uh, we talked about ride heights in another video but one of the important things to calculate this out is to know how high this bolt is off of the racetrack so because as you talk about spread at the front and rear one of the basics is to know this number here from here to the ground and then the back lower bolt from the ground because you can calculate that angle easily by knowing those numbers so a lot of times when i talk to somebody about their setup i will ask them well you know where is this bolt where's your lower bolt hole at from the track surface well i don't know i never checked that so that should be just as important as logging the ride height is the number from the center of this bolt to the track surface because that's going to tell me roughly how if I, if I know that number in the spreads, I can roughly calculate where this thing is for intersect point and height. So these are very important things. Now, th this is not nothing mysterious about this back here. This is all basic geometry. It's very simple and it's just numbers and placement and angle. So it's uh, it's not a mystery and don't be afraid to experiment. Do um, be conscientious about the fact that when you move make sure both sides are the same keep everything the same you would it's surprisingly enough we see um, cars come in that get that might be getting an update that have the bar in a different place from one side to the other and uh, you need to keep both sides exactly the same so again this is just a basic intro to four links and I touched on a lot of stuff there but it's uh, it's kind of an intro to the terminology and things that we check and and the angle of this bottom bar is something that we're going to be very interested in when setting up a car and the spread and the length of the four links.